sorry I'm late, Miss Connor. Oh, that's all right, Freddie. Here, I'll take your bag. Oh. How are things for the big city? Oh, hot and crowded. Good to be back here. Here, watch yourself. Thank you. Freddie, I thought you were going to get that knock the engine fixed. I'd be meaning to. I'll have it fixed next time you're back. I stopped by Joe Hatchie's on the way over. He wasn't there. That's why I'm late. Where is he? Who knows? He's not worth it. Why don't you give him up? No, I won't do that. Why or not? He's still a bum. I still believe in him. Whatever you say, Miss Connor. Freddy. The past mortars. you like to do most? I've got a silly idea that I'd like to bake a pie for my husband. Why not? Let's make a stab at it. Oh, but how I? You know how to make a pie. But first, we're going to need some newspapers put on the floor in case we spill something. Newspaper? Newspaper? I don't even know where they put them. Well, never mind. But that's one of the things you're going to need to learn, is to put things back in their right places. Your family will have to learn, too. Yes. Well, now, get everything you need and put it here on the table. Okay. Here's the rest of the bread.
putting my stuff on the cupboards. Doors and drawers always closed. ever get into doing this, Miss Connor? I always wanted to be a teacher. When I lost my sight, I thought I'd have to give up. But then I found out about the Canadian National Institute for the Blind and realized that I still could be a teacher. And that's what I've been doing ever since. I last saw you? Why don't you leave me alone? You don't need to feel this way, Doug. Okay, okay. You're not the first person to have been blinded. I don't like people consoling me, okay? Oh, nuts. What's wrong? Well, except one thing if you've got it. A cigarette. I haven't any. I don't smoke. I'm sorry. Better get my old man to go out and get me some before he goes to work. Why not go yourself? Yeah. Stumble all over the place and have everybody saying, poor Doug. Nobody's feeling as sorry for you as you are. Why don't you go out and show people what you can do? What I can do? If I can go all over the countryside alone and I'm a woman... But you've got some sight. Not much more than you. I got nothing. I've heard some good things about you when you had your sight. But I guess they didn't go very deep. What didn't go very deep? Your spunk. No. No. Okay. I'll go to the store. First guy that says anything, I'll punch him in the nose. Good. I'll come with you. to have to learn to use that cane. Yeah, sure. Doug? This is my car. It's a little over 2,000 miles on it. I can't use it anymore. You could sell it. Yeah. I won't be driving it anywhere. I used to do lots of things. I used to be the best hardball pitcher around here. I was on a hockey team. I had a good job, too. Doug, would you really like a job? What do you mean? You could earn a living. What kind of a living? Making brooms? No. You're mechanically minded. You could operate a drill press. Or a lathe. Skilled work. It's tricky. Crazy. Blind guy doing that? Certainly. 
Why, you could be a garage mechanic. Would you like that, Doug? Sure, I'd like it. I'd like to be Rockefeller, too. Well, anyway, let's go and get those cigarettes. Hey, how do you get around all over the place the way you do? There's ways. You'll learn them. Doug. Hmm? You know this town better than I do. You're going to have to show me. Sam, I'd like you to meet Miss Connor. This is Sam Blake. How do you do, Miss Connor? Pleased to meet you. Mr. Blake, do you know a man called Joe Hatchie? Joe Hatchie, the blind fellow. He comes in here every so often. Has he been in recently? Uh, no, not for a couple of weeks. If he should be in again, would you give him a message for me? I'd be glad to, Miss Connor. Will you tell him I'm in town and that I'm looking for him? I'll remember that, Miss Connor. Well, I guess we better be going. Well, see you again, eh, Doug? Sure, Sam. Well, goodbye, Miss Connor. Goodbye, Mr. Blake. Goodbye. Bye. and Spence. How am I doing? Wonderful. Say, are you good looking? No, I don't think so. Bet you are. I'm going to leave you here, Doug. I'll like it back. Oh, it's easy. All along the fence there. You'll be in your own backyard. Won't you come in for a cup of coffee? My mother makes awful good coffee. I'd like to, Doug. But I have to see my boyfriend. Boyfriend? Well, I call him my boyfriend. He's only seven. But awfully smart. Oh. I may not be smart, but I sure would like to see you again soon. Oh, you will, Doug. You will. in your book. Yeah? It's all about cowboys and Indians. Why won't they let me play with them? You play lots of games with them, Jimmy. But some you can't play. You know that. It's going to be the same when you go to school. Let's try this new book. Your friends haven't read it yet, I bet. All right. The Lone Ranger had a secret plan. Hey, Buzz, come on! Turn to console and wink. Then he turned to 
Jed. We'll be on the lookout for your horse, he said. Harry, is that you? No, George. No, it's George. Who else is there? Steve, Greg, and Jackie. Aren't you playing? No. How do you do that? What? Read with your fingers. There's little bumps in the paper. See? Read us some more. We'll make sure he has a good home. See, Jimmy? They aren't really mad at you. What's everybody mad at me for? Getting up in the middle of the night. How do I know if it's middle of the night? You must believe me when I tell you. Get on with lessons and don't waste Miss Conger's time. Oh, he's not wasting my time. That's what I'm here for, to help you and him. <sighs> what difference it makes? Night or day? Seven o'clock? Three o'clock? It makes a very difference to me. See what I'm measuring this house? Miss <laughs> Conger, see, see what I put up with. You must realize, Mr. Kovac, your wife has new responsibilities. You'd better behave yourself. Now, shall we read another line? A and D and this W A T water is in the pail. Pail? Ditch. You're just guessing. K. No, no. I'm sick of her. Isaac, Isaac, what you do? Throw the book like that. I don't want to learn. I quit. I stop. I don't want no books. All right, all right, Miss Connor, leave him alone. Don't bother with him. Look, look the book. It is hard work. Lessons. 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 I know. It is hard. Don't get discouraged. It's the same for everybody at the beginning. Miss Connor, what's your politics? Don't answer, Miss Connor. <laughs> he gets crazy every time people post politics with him. So don't post politics with him. <laughs> he thinks he knows everything what is good for the country. Yeah? And what's that? Don't talk politics, Miss Connor. Can't I even talk to her? Miss Connor doesn't want to talk politics. Why not? Everybody should be politically. Yeah, and where it gets you. Okay, okay, I won't talk. Pretty soon you will tell me, don't eat no more icy Kovac. You wouldn't even let me get off of bed. Don't talk. Don't eat. Do nothing. <laughs> Listen to him. Okay, okay. I want you talk. You listen to the radio. I'm not here. Okay. Is it time for the news? No. Eddie Cantor. Why isn't he no more on the radio? He's the only funny man. Mm -hmm. He's not very funny. What do you think, Miss Connor? Oh, I don't know. Eddie Cantor? He's the only funny man. Jack Benny, Bob Hope, Jimmy with the long nose. Bah! Eddie Cantor. He's too clever for you. Yeah. How about you think here of a night, Mrs. Connor? It's getting late. I should like to very much. 
would be nice, but I have made other arrangements. Perhaps when I come again. Here are your letters, ma'am. Oh, thank you. Drop this. Oh, thank you. How do you read those? A friend reads them for me. I see. I uh, bought a belt from a blind fellow yesterday. Oh, who is that? Well, I don't know his name. He hangs around here off and on. Kind of a thin faced fellow. See you looking tight. Could be somebody I'm looking for. Some of the couple of the braids were twisted the wrong way, but he said they'd hold my pants up just the same. I kind of felt sorry for the guy. Sounds like Joe Hatchie. Can I uh, help you through the door? Oh, thank you. That'd be very nice. Now that you mention it, they did call him Joe something. You don't know where he'd be. This is a fair-sized town. He might still be around. Did he have any more belts to sell? Oh, I don't know. First time I've seen him trying to sell anything. Usually just wanders around with his hat out. If you should see him again in the next day or two, would you let me know? You could tell Mr. Bell at the bank. Sure. I had a cousin who was blind. Was he drunk or sober? My cousin? No, the man you brought the belt from. <laughs> no, I, I'd say it wasn't one way or wasn't quite the other. Sounds like Joe. He could straighten out if he'd only try. Well, I'll, I'll keep my eyes open for him. Thanks very much. Hey, uh, you all right now? Thanks, fine. Goodbye. Did you ever see a potato race, question mark? It is run in the open air and is not very exciting, comma. But it has its good point, period, paragraph. I think that will do for this afternoon, Joan. No, dictate a little more to me. You're doing fine. You've had enough dictation for this afternoon. But you're going to have to work harder at your Braille. I don't like Braille. It's so hard. Mother, Mother, come and read this and see if there are any mistakes. Yes, dear. Such a beautiful day to be sitting inside. All I've been hearing is a great rattle and sound like a machine gun. Isn't she getting to be a marvel on the typewriter? Yes. If she gets any better, I shall have to take lessons from her. Uh, I don't see any mistakes, dear. But she's going to have to work more at her braille. I think she'll have far more use for her typing. I'm not so sure. Well, of course she will. Whether she goes to university or keeps on with her typing, she must know braille. I'm going to work for Daddy. She won't have any use for the braille when her eyes are better again. What? Haven't you told Joan? Jo Joan. Joan. Would you please go and call your daddy and ask him to come home right away? All right, Mother. Is it really as bad as all that? You have talked to Dr. Summers. How can you go on building up this false hope in Joan? Oh, Mr. McKay, please. Joan may lose her sight completely. You'll have to face it. Oh, I can't. I can't. You must tell Joan. She has to know and understand.
Oh, Freddie, will you be on the lookout for Joe Hatchy? I don't want to miss him next time. Why worry about the lazy drunkard? He hasn't always been that way, you know, Joe. Hey, Freddie, guess who's in there? Your friend, Joe Hatchy. Joe, come on, Freddie. Joe! Scott. Joe! I've been looking all over for you. Yeah, I I heard. You didn't want to see me. Is that it, Joe? I been busy, Miss Connor. Really busy, Joe? I I had a lot of things to do. Joe, we've been all over this before. Why don't you come to Toronto? Learn a job and be a man again. I don't know. Good, Joe. You will come? No, I, I better stay here. I don't want to go into one of those big places. You think it's coming this time? Joe, won't you come? No, that's not for me. I'll be back, Joe. <laughs> 